Ride through the city like Brennan Shaw. I'm on a mission to get it all. Ride through the city like Brennan Shaw. If you ain't thick, please don't get involved. And now, Brendan Thick Boy Shaw. What is up, fam? It is Monday morning, February 20th. It's President's Day. So take a second to honor your presidents. And then just kind of move on with your day, you know? That's about it. Maybe cook a nice little meal for the presidents. See what some of their favorite meals is. Uh, Trump's was hot dogs. I know that. He loved hot dogs. Biden's is graham crackers and soup. So, yeah. Cook accordingly, fam. Cook accordingly. Fresh off the plane from Naples. Shout out to Naples, Florida. I could live there, but there's so many old people. It makes me sad. Outside that, I could definitely live there. The hurricanes might be an issue. Uh, before we jump right into this, heavy balls deep in Jake Paul and Tommy Fury episode. A um, few housekeeping notes. I am all over California this week performing. Uh, starts Tuesday night at the Comedy Store in the main room. And then Thursday night, I'm in Bakersfield. I'm in Bakersfield one night only. There are 30 tickets left for that one show in Bakersfield. Uh, that's where the band Corn was born. So shout out to Bakersfield. I know nothing else about Bakersfield. I think, uh, no, I was going to say Chuck Liddell was kind of over. For, not really. It's more of the corn thing. And I'm not talking about the vegetable. The band Corn is from Bakersfield. And now your boy's there. That's all I know about Bakersfield. But one night only, one show. Um, that's Thursday night. And then Pasadena, the Ice House, is finally open. Your boy is doing a Shab and Friends Saturday night, one show only, 10 p.m., February 25th. Trevor Wallace, Adam Ray, very special guest. That is at the Ice House. The new Ice House is finally back up and running. So that goes down this Saturday. Then March 3rd, one night, one show only. Uh, March 3rd, two shows, one night at the Magical Brea Improv. And then uh, March 9th through the 11th, I'm in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. That is Brickstown Comedy Club. So come get you some. Now, the reason why I only have one show March 3rd is on March, March 4th with a very special fight campaign for UFC 285, John Jones Return. I couldn't miss that. And this Sunday, we have a very special uh, Cowbass fight companion. I think it starts at 11 a.m. Is 11 a.m. here because we're fighting Saudi Arabia? Yeah. 11 a.m. here. Uh, Pacific time on Thick Boy YouTube. You have Cowbass Fight Campaign for Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, and we have some very special guests, which I will announce on my social media as we lock these peeps up. But that goes down this freaking Sunday. It's going to be a fun one. Tommy Fury, Jake Paul, somebody's O has got to go, even though there's only about 14 fights between the two of them. Still, somebody's O has got to go. So let's jump right on in, kids. You got Jake Paul, Tommy Fury is finally coming to fruition, and it happens this Sunday in Saudi Arabia. This fight's an easy one for me to break down. This is, uh, you're talking about two polar opposites. You're talking about two gentlemen who are undefeated, and um, one is a power puncher. The other is a finesse uh, footwork type of dude. One of them has gone eight rounds with a high-level fighter. The other hasn't gone past four. Um, they are both undefeated, but um, to me, if you look at the tail of the tape here, Jake Paul's going to be maybe he's an inch taller, um, he's a little heavier, and they're bo both orthodox. The thing about this whole fight is you have a straight up power puncher that doesn't use a lot of footwork versus a kind of a pretty boy who uses footwork, is not a power puncher, punches in volumes, and hates when the fight gets dirty. And also has some cardio issues with only going four rounds. Um, don't get it twisted. There's a reason Jake Paul has been chasing Tommy Fury all over this world to get this fight. This fight, was this the third or fourth time supposed to happen? You know, and Jake Paul has lost money putting promotional dollars into it. And Tommy Fury saying his ribs hurt or he can't get in because of immigration. Whatever reason he came up with, which I don't buy. Um, and I have no animosity towards Tommy uh fury in any facet i actually enjoy the guy loved him on uh, uh love island thought he's the best guest get, uh, guy on there and with his shout out to molly may his wife and uh baby mama so i have no issues with him i just think this comes down to they're both inexperienced but when you look at inexperience um you i always look who's tougher who wants it more and i think this is clear as day jake paul wants to fight more i actually think there's more pressure on tommy fury 
with his background, uh, with the Fury name, his brother being the best heavyweight to ever do it, his dad and his brother, I think, advised him against this fight. And, you know, there's some, some kind of back talk there, but why he didn't make the fight happen earlier. So I actually think there's a lot more pressure on Tommy Fury because he comes from boxing royalty. He's not very battle tested. Um, you look at some of his opponents. Now, people say, well, he has, you know, two more fights than Jake Paul. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Let me do you a favor <laughs> here. So I've heard of like warming up like as an amateur or even as when you start off as a pro boxer, there's warming up and then there's Tommy Fury's record. Let me just go through it. Now, if you just casually box for a workout and kind of do it, you tell me how you would do against Tommy Fury's uh, strength of schedule with his opponents. So his first fight was in 2018. The guy, ready? The guy's... 10 and 102 <laughs> might not be for you. I don't know. Who, who am I to say? I'm like, hey, keep doing your thing, man. So then wait, you know what? That was a tough fight. That was a tough fight. You want off points. Let's step it up a notch. Let's step it up. Like I had a lot of experience and you still beat him off points. Remember, these are only four round fights. His next fight, the guy's 0 and 26. Again, I don't know if he should continue boxing, but who am I to say? He's still doing the damn thing. He's 0-26. He won that via KO. Hell yeah, dude. You got it done. Uh, he got did it with body shots. Now, Tommy Fury, in no facet, anyone who has an eye for boxing is going to say this guy is a power puncher in any freaking facet. He punches in volume. He wants to stay outside. He hates when it gets dirty. This is a nightmare of a matchup for Tommy Fury. So, right, so he went 10, uh, he fought a guy who was 10, 102, all right, beat him. Then he fought a guy who was 0 and 26, he beat him. I'm like, all right, dude, we got to step it up now. You're going to fight this guy, ready? Who's 2 and 26. <laughs> all right, and then he beat him. He beat him. He beat him. Remember, these are only four rounds. And then they went, you know what, dude, you didn't look your best there. You didn't look your best there. So why don't we, uh, why don't we fight this guy who's 0 and 11? Okay, so in just going th <laughs> going through these opponents, the ones I've listed off these four, uh, they have uh, twelve wins and one hundred twenty four, uh, one hundred and fifty. <laughs> they're they're tw they're twelve and one hundred and fifty in his first four fights. Again, I, I'm all about starting a guy off slow. They're slow, and then there's just moonwalking through a career. Uh, so he goes 0 and 11. They went, all right, you know, it, it, uh, is the doctor stopped in a second? We want to see a little more out of you. You're going to fight Scott Williams, who's 0 and 9. <laughs> okay. Um, so then he beat him. Um, and then he fought a guy who was 2 and 0, uh, and it went to a decision. And then uh, he fought a guy, and this was the most, to me, the most alarming fight. Um, he fought a guy in Anthony Taylor who's an MMA guy. So, you know, the Fury family wants to talk shit about MMA guys and the boxing community wants to talk shit about MMA guys coming over to boxing. You guys should be thanking your boxing stars that MMA guys are interested in your sport and are coming over and bringing eyeballs into your dying sport. Nobody's watching. The only reason that you guys are hating on this because the sweet science. I get it and I respect the hell of it and I love boxing. But you guys should be grateful that these young kids with a huge fan base are coming over and just ching, clear bringing boxing back to life. Who else is doing it? Tommy Fury? Sure, not really. And I guess you, you, you could hate on him because he's fighting at this magnitude and doesn't have the experience, which I don't hate on a guy for that. What would you do if you were Tommy Fury or Jake Paul? Of course, you want all the eyeballs, all the money. But think about it, the stars in boxing. There's not a ton of them. There's not a ton of them. So you should be grateful that these guys are bringing eyeballs to the sport. That's a different conversation. But the most alarming fight to me for Tommy Fury is, you know, them hating on MMA guys. He fights a guy in Anthony Taylor, Anthony T-Rex Taylor. And this is no shade at Anthony Taylor. He gave him a hell of a fight. Um, he looked awful. He looked awful. And it's a bit of a clash of styles again. Tommy Fury wants to sit outside and look pretty, sh throw jabs, use footwork, he, and this is a huge jump, but he's similar to his brother where they're not knockout artists. They're, they're going to sit on the outside and they're throw combos and they want long flowing punches and they're only pu punching about 60%. You never see a heavy 
you know, 80, 90, 100% throw to knock a guy out. It's just not what they do. They would rather sit outside, um, especially in Tommy, sit outside and make it cute. And th when you fight a guy like Anthony Taylor, shorter reach, um, more of a brawler, it, the fight is really ugly. Well, Jake Paul does not want to sit outside. Jake Paul isn't known for his footwork. Jake Paul is going to be in his grill for eight rounds. Now, we've seen Jake go eight rounds. I think the farthest that Tommy Fury has gone is five rounds. Is that right, Jen? I think he went five rounds in his last fight. His last fight, uh, cut over the left eye, down once in the fifth round. So I, I'm pretty sure uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's so take a look. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure he's only gone five. Five rounds, and he and his cardio doesn't look good. And good, so they stopped oh, in the I six. Think. So yeah, he's, he's gone five. He didn't fight the six rounds, so he's gone five. Prior to that, it was uh, four rounds, one round, two rounds, four rounds, five rounds. This is an eight round fight. We've seen Jake go eight rounds, and as a power puncher, be able to withstand you know the issues with being a power puncher, getting tired, and still be able to face adversity like he did in Anderson Silva, and still continue to be able to fight and still have power like he did when he knocked down Anderson Silva late in the rounds. Anderson Silva compared to Tommy Fury is apples and oranges. It's not even close how much more of a better boxer Anderson Silva is than Tommy Fury. Now, he's younger, but um, it's just stylistically, don't get twisted. One of the reasons why Jake and his brother are so good is everything is calculated. He's been running, chasing Tommy Fury down for damn near over two years now to get this fight because stylistically, out of anybody that he's fought, anybody, he's a perfect matchup for him. He's labeled as a boxer, so checks that box. You guys have been crying about it. He's not finding boxers. Well, I guess here's a boxer. You know, his first four fights, their total record is 12 and 150. But here's a boxer, a guy who doesn't come from MMA, only focus on boxing. Watch what happens to your boxer. I would be willing to bet, if anybody out there wants to take this bet, Jake knocks him out in under four rounds. Because the thing is, is, Tommy might be able to do his thing with his footwork and get, you know, land some good combos. It doesn't matter. Jake's been hit harder by way tougher guys. So he might be down a round or two going into the third, maybe going into the fourth. But Jake can trade three Tommy Fury punches for one of his. All Jake needs is one open shot to land. Fury can land as many as he wants. And it's not going to affect the fight. It's just not. He doesn't have power. He wasn't born with power. Now, is Tommy, does Tommy Fury do some things better than Jake Paul in boxing? Absolutely. He grew up boxing. He has a much more uh, established amateur background. His brother's also the best heavyweight to ever do it. His dad was a fighter, so he grew up in that atmosphere. His fundamentals are better. But when it comes down to it, I would be willing to bet on a Jake Paul over Tommy Fury. I just think, A, Jake's tougher. B, stylistically, it's a nightmare for Tommy Fury. He wants to sit outside and look cute. Jake's going to get in your grill. He's very good at dirty boxing. He has power inside that uh, close range. And he has way more knockouts with less fights. I think Jake, as easy as day, gets it done. The, I'm sure nerves are going to be there, but I'm willing to bet on uh, Tommy Fury not being able to last eight complete rounds with Jake Paul, who has better cardio, hits harder, and has a better mentality for the sport. He just checks every box over Tommy Fury. There's a reason he's been chasing this dude down. You're going to see it come this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on Thick Boy YouTube on Cal Bass Fight Companion. We're all going to be standing up and cheering, watching Jake Paul knock Tommy Fury unconscious. I would bet money on it. This doesn't go to decision. And if it is, it's just from Tommy running like a crazed man. And Jake's just landing shots and chasing him down. Ends up winning, you know, like six rounds to two or some shit. But I'd be willing to bet he knocks him out, knocks him out cold. And then I bet you they're friends. I bet the, the Fury family and the Pauls, they're, it's all good because they'll respect that. But yeah, he's going to knock him out. Let's take a little break from me chatting your ear off about Tommy Fury and Jake Paul because my friends at Green Chef... They've expanded their menu. Now choose from over 30 recipes weekly with the option to mix and match meals from different diets, whatever you're on. All right, it all comes in the same box without changing your plan. You can order vegan one day, keto the next. They got all for you. I filled up with the protein pack. It's their newest collection of recipes fit for a high-protein diet. 
with my psoriasis your boy's only eating protein i'm only eating meat right now green chef recipes feature premium protein seasonal organic produce and they have great seafood expand your palate with the unique farm fresh ingredients like figs dates artichokes green chef is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset we offset 100 of our carbon footprint as well as 100 of the plastic in every freaking box 100 of our seafood meets the monterey bay aquarium seafood watch rankings of certified best choice or good alternatives with green chef you're reducing your food waste by up to 38 percent versus grocery shopping we got you covered man you want to start living a healthy life it's all about your diet so go to greenchef.com that's green chef c-h-e-f.com slash shop 60 use code shop 60 get 60 percent off plus free shipping all right that's greenchef.com slash shop 60 the number one meal kit for eating well greenchef.com slash shop 60 this episode of the shop show is brought to you by happy hippo that's right happy hippo.com you get the best kratom on planet earth i reached out to happy hippo i've been a big kratom uh supporter for a long time but you can't just trust anyone you got to believe what's in these little containers there's multiple ways to get your kratom i do it with these shots this is the kratom shot all right they're highly freaking concentrated shots of pure kratom this one is apple my favorite is the new butterscotch but if you don't like them they have pills for you they got powders they got gummies however you want to get your kratom into your body do it with happy hippo happyhippo.com promo code is thick 23 thick with three c's t-h-i-c-c-c 23 you get 20 percent off the entire site again powders gummies pills the shots that i use i personally reached out to happy hippo to work with me because i love their product and here we are happyhippo.com promo code is thick 23 thick with three c's you save 20 percent off for life use as many times you want share it with as many friends as you want kratom is the gift that keeps on giving listen i've tried everything i've tried everything to fire this brain up you guys know i need the help and i've never felt better when i'm on happy hippo kratom all right that's happyhippo.com promo code thick 23 20 percent off for life let's get back to the program it's just a nightmare of a style for uh tommy fear to deal with there couldn't be a worse matchup at this level don't get it twisted off the canal or some bullshit like that would absolutely mop the floor with both these guys at the same time i'm not talking about that i'm talking about that where he's at in his career with the huge gaps he has in his boxing game jake paul poses the most difficult challenges for him and jake paul has a lot riding on this and i would be willing to bet jake knocks him out in under four rounds you excited for it, Chin? Of course, man. We've been waiting for this for a while. Yeah, and I, you know, there's uh, Jake's still not going to get his credit even after he knocks him out. It's just not going to work because mm -hmm. you know, if, before Jake came along, Tommy Fury was kind of the Jake Paul of the actual boxing community. Came from a reality show, right? Grew up with a you know silver spoon in his mouth. You know, he, he was huge on that reality show. He was known more for that than he was for his boxing. So even though his brother's the greatest to ever do it, and he's huge over there in Manchester and just the UK in general. So no one gave him credit either. So they're both dealing with those demons. I just, if I had to bet on just sheer toughness, I'm betting, as you guys would call him, the Disney kid. I think Jake has some demons and it, he's unbreakable man he's unbreakable at this point in his career and the level that he's fighting he's unbreakable and his i know th they're not real boxers do you understand what woodley or what freaking uh Andrew Silva would do to any opponent that tommy fury has fought it would be embarrassing so for jake to pass those tests and after seeing how tommy fury performed against t-rex taylor this one's an easy pick for me i know i'm biased jake's your boy yeah whatever i'm telling you man there couldn't be a worse matchup for tommy fury at this level uh, uh gennady Golovkin, stuff like that a terrence crawford even though they're smaller the obviously even tank davis being waste one obviously those are a nightmare of a matchup for him i'm saying at this level with a guy with six fights eight, anybody with under 15 fights there couldn't be a worse matchup for him Unless there's some big prospect coming out of the Olympics, something like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about coming from their backgrounds at this level with their experience. And they obviously they have room to improve. Both of them do. But at this stage of the game, it's not even close how much better of a boxer Jake Paul is than Tommy Fury. 
hate yeah. to tell you guys you can hate on it all you want oh but he's just doing this for what he could make he could play chess and make money he didn't give a shit he has enough money already he could it's race fine. cars he could have a tv show collecting bunny rabbits and he'd make money <laughs> but he chose to box and since he chose to box unfortunately for tommy fury he's gonna get knocked out on live television sunday under four rounds coming in hot <laughs> and by the way when he when he ko'd tyron woodley that's when i think most people well me at least for sure thought he was legit his fight with anderson silva knocking him down the anderson one did for me yeah and then there's you know that stupid video that's going around like oh it, he that's barely right. scraped yeah you look at the other angle we, we put it on the on, on this podcast you could see the actual hit blah muhammad yeah. said it best i don't know where he got it maybe he made it up but when the hate doesn't work they start to tell lies so the hate that never it doesn't affect jake paul's numbers most people that hate never works online because it's not real and then they start to tell lies because it's not working so they gotta come up with something else so for jake it was like okay man he beat fucking anderson sylvie outboxed him for eight fucking rounds not dropped him down him, yeah. oh it's fake right it's always this it's fake it's fake because you have to tell lies because the hate's not working it keeps him bigger he's get, keeps getting better at boxing so they have to start telling lies they have nothing else to do just the way hate goes losers are going to lose so he had they got to come with that narrative oh it's fake okay so if he knocks out tommy fury in under four you think tommy signed up for that you think tommy's going to ruin his reputation in the fucking united kingdom to get knocked out by a kid comes from the disney channel you think he's in on it which and again these losers will be like it's fake okay so then what happens when he fights nate diaz or conor mcgregor is that fake as well what's fake you think if tommy fury were to pull out and mike perry steps in do you know mike perry you think you can give mike perry a script and he's gonna follow it he has a tattoo on his face <laughs> Mike Perry's going to try and rip your head off. So, yeah, when the hate doesn't work, they start to tell lies. That's how it goes. It's a bummer, yeah. Ah, it's a bummer. It, it, never, keeps, it never holds its worth. They just, you can't stop, won't stop. Mm. You had a big UFC this weekend. Now, big for one of the matchups. You had uh, Aaron uh, Blanchfield versus Jex Jessica Andrade. Mm -hmm. Sh Should have been a tougher fight for uh, Aaron, but, man, she looked good. Straight up. <laughs> Straight so up contender good. now. Yeah. My God, she doubt. looked good. She looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. Bummer to see Jim Miller go out like that, huh? Tough fight. Alex Hernandez. It's just, you know, the tides are turning. There's a lot of guys that are that we grew up loving. And I fought on I think oh, I fought with his brother on a card. I, I don't know if I've ever fought on the same card as Jim Miller, but he's just been doing it for a hot second. You know, hot second. But you know, these guys, cowboy and all these other guys are retiring. Could be like there's a changing of the guard, man. They've Jim, done it long enough, and they've proved themselves. But at least Jim Miller didn't get like no. He's always tough as face shit. down, yeah. ass up. No, no, no. Yeah. He's a savage. Dude. Yep. You look at the guys he's beat. You know, he's beat Charles Oliveira twice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been doing it for a hot second. Yeah. Man. You look at OSP. He didn't look like he wanted to be in a fist fight. No, there's two people on this fight that did not seem like they wanted to be there. That's what I want to ask you about too. Because remember, I remember you mentioned it before. Like you were in the locker room. And you're like, I just don't want to be here. Yeah. I don't want to go out there. Yep. So it seemed like OSP and also William Knight, that just jack dude that was just oh, getting leg kicked all night. I didn't know. do anything. He, was, he had yeah. tits, dude. <laughs> Fighting them worked He's out. So he jacked. could work at Hooters for sure. <laughs> Man Hooters. Yeah. Man Hoots. Yeah, he didn't look like he wanted to be in there. Uh, I mean, OSP didn't either. He, and, you know, knocked out in 49 seconds. But OSP's been known for a hot. OSP started when I started. Damn. I used to train with OSP back in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. He grew, he was a football player from Tennessee. So you know, when doing that long, you know, and you're out of the running to really, you know, do something. Yeah, a great guy though, really good guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, but yeah, Aaron uh, Blanchfield looked. Phenomenal. She looked amazing, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, man, that's it, dog. <laughs> She, she she should get a top shot next. I'd assume you don't you don't just. She walk. called out out uh, Valentina Shevchenko like what, who yeah, the hell well, calls out her? You don't walk through Jessica Andrade and then not get a title shot. Yeah. I mean, Jessica Andrade is tough as they come. She looked great. Her transition in the back was filthy. Take down filthy. Super good. Um, so, dude, I didn't realize this, but the uh, the bare knuckle the BKFC over the weekend was probably the most exciting card over the weekend. Look at the look at the finishes. 
it's like one decision and the rest of them are KO. Yeah, they don't have gloves on, Jen. I was, dude, I don't care. <laughs> dude, did you see Greg Hardy get knocked out? I did. It was such a bad knockout. People were, uh, you know, it's just Grant, because with his background, and I get it, you know, you put your hands on a woman, people do not put up with that unless you're Dana White. Um, but with uh, Greg Hardy, people were so happy to see him get knocked out, but that comes with the territory, right? Mm. It, it, you know, completely different with Jake Paul. You know how happy people would be if he got knocked down? So there's just this animosity towards certain fighters. Now, Jake Paul didn't doesn't deserve that. He's just living his best life and bringing eyeballs to the sport and doing it at his pace and making more money than everyone. That triggers people. Like, you didn't earn it. Sure, whatever. Um, but with Greg Hardy... You know, when you have that dark background, I do believe in forgiveness, you know, and it, from what I hear from all his training partners, everything, he's a good dude, just wants to learn, you know, and he he did get cut from the UFC. And in the UFC, and take it from me, I know this, there's not enough hours in the day to, to make up the holes, no matter how talented you are, how good you are, how athletic you are, to once you get to that top tier guys, they, they've just seen it all. You just, experience is, is so key there. So with Greg Hardy, of course, his UFC run was going to be tough. The UFC let him go. He's going to try and fight his way back, and then he gets in BKFC. He took this on short no notice. I think he weighed 295, <sighs> and he was a pretty big favorite in this fight, and he got – it. now, it didn't look awful, uh, the punch. Like, we've seen harder punches. That dude he's fighting, uh, is there it, – it, it looks like a, a Jeff Munson type of character. Is this left hook. Yeah, or, yeah, it was left hook. Boom, 295, man. He's just pointing out. People are crunk about this. Yeah, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Bare knuckle going to bare knuckle. Let's take another little break because this episode of the Shop Show is also brought to you by Onnit. Onnit Supplements. Onnit.com slash shop. 10% off the entire freaking site. Whether you're looking for Alpha Brain, Alpha Brain Black, Alpha Brain Focus Shot, Alpha Brain Instant, put in 10 ounces of cold water, Boom, you're freaking Steve Jobs. They got krill oil, joint oil, protein powders, Virutech for immune health, which your boy has to take with my psoriasis. They have all sorts of things to get your body in peak condition. They have fitness gear, streaming gear. With Alpha Brain, it's the number one nootropic on the planet. You can get it at Walmart, but help your boy out. Go to onnit.com slash shop for 10% off. Um, and they give you your money back guarantee. If you don't like it, keep the Alpha Brain, share it with a friend, you get your money back. You don't need to send the product back. Go ahead and keep it, but they're going to refund your money. But there's Alpha Brain, then there's Alpha Brain Black. That's for the real doers, the real go getters. Alpha Brain Black is highly concentrated Alpha Brain, and it's Alpha Brain and then some. It's that secret sauce Alpha Brain, Alpha Brain Black. That's what your boy, lose it, boy uses. It's the black label Alpha Brain. It is. The only nootropic I use, it is the best nootropic on the planet. They've sold over a million bottles of the regular Alpha Brain. But if you're trying to step your game up, if the if you've been using Alpha Brain like I have for over eight years and you need a little pep in your step, Alpha Brain Black Label. And then I also like the instant Alpha Brains, the shots, they're great. On it.com slash shop, 10% off the entire site, including Alpha Brain Black, Alpha Brain Instant, Alpha Brain Focus Shot, and your regular nootropic, the number one seller, regular Alpha Brain. On it.com slash shop, 10% off. Now let's get back to the program. And then your boy, Diego Sanchez. Yes. I think um, these commissions, the organizations are going to try and capitalize. Diego Sanchez, you know, one of the goats. He's, he's, you know, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. But I think the commissions who allow him to continue fighting should. They, they oh, should that too. They should, press they should press charges against him. Yeah. Because uh, a fighter, especially a guy of his magnitude, they're not going to stop, man. They're, they're just built different. So it's, it's so easy for the public to go, I don't care why he keeps doing it. I don't know why he doesn't stop. You got to realize that dude is, if this was back in the day, he's a Spartan man. He doesn't know anything else. That's all. The only thing that makes him happy is competing and punching people in the face. He doesn't want to do anything else. But you have to have some sort of legislation, some sort of commission go, enough. No, no, no. We know you love it. You, maybe you be a coach, do something. Enough. Because you're going to pay for this down the road. They, 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 there should be fucking there should be charges brought against these. it's ridiculous yeah and, and and for these fighters out there when are you guys gonna realize the commission the ceos the presence of these companies that you're working for that you're fighting for don't give a shit about your health dude they're gonna squeeze every dime out of you that they can and when you start having issues later in life go ahead and try and call them let me know how it goes for you they don't give a shit man 
What's up? No, I'm just saying slap fighting. That's a perfect example. They don't give a shit. Oh, that, I mean, that's they, just They off. actually, they, they pass the commission. Like, how the hell is that possible? The, that's, I mean, it's clear. They're just, it's just these huge red flags for fighters. Like, hey, man, you got to take care of yourself. Build a business outside of it. You got, you, this slap fight, is that, is that going to prove you the point? Is BKFC letting these guys fight? You know, at what point are you guys going to realize you're on your own, man? You got to get a close knit team around you, let you know it's time to walk away, then also help you so you can focus on fighting because you got to have both feet in, but they're building stuff outside for you, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm with, uh, remember when Rogan was talking about like uh, bare knuckle fighting, how it's better, it's safer because there's not, you know, because yeah. your hands are weaker without the, the mm -hmm. glove and the wrap mm -hmm. and stuff. If BKFC actually didn't allow them to wrap their hands, because they're still wrapping their hands. Right, their their wrists are stronger and everything. So if they just let it be straight up bare knuckle, I wonder how that would be. If it'd be safer or not, it's just tough. It's just tough, and then I'll show you a lot more broken wrists, stuff like That's that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you're not gonna punch as yeah, crazy, right? Maybe it. It's just MMA is tough enough to to sell to the public, and they've yeah, done yeah. a good job of it. But you start going bare knuckle, then slap fight. I think the commission or the Congress sent a thing like, "Hey, TPS, yeah, someone, what are you doing? You, What's yeah. next?" Yeah, but I'm, like, I'm with you, though. It's, a, it's about money, obviously. How could they let this slap? You have no defense. And I, just I understand it's about money, and you have some sponsors on that, but, I mean, the, with the views. Now, this is not the, good. All the time. We're doing well on TikTok. I'm like, you know how I know you're losing? But, but we're getting hella views on TikTok. I'm like, hey, let me talk to you. You're 60, right? You're 60. <laughs> I don't know how old he is. But, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, we all agree that slap fight is just, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so this is the, so Diego Sanchez is saying that he might take legal action against Austin Trout's team Again, right, for he's this. not surrounded by good people. So the, the team, I guess the cut man or the cut man and then his coach, they, they pass around Vaseline and then the coach put, according to what I read, it was the coach put some Vaseline on the back of Austin Trout's neck. Cause you know, Diego's a freaking MMA fighter. You, you do clinches and stuff, right? It's going to slip. Yeah. So he did that, put on his back, and then they in between rounds, they put a Vaseline on Austin Trout's face. Do you, is that illegal or illegal? I don't remember. That should UFC. be legal. It is, yeah, should be legal in UFC too. Yeah. Okay, to so the face cuts, should be fine, yeah. right? Face is fine. So that's the body's argument. not. But this part is not. And this is uh, some uh, Twitter guy named Ryan Gulfoyle. Okay. And he posted this, and I'll play it for you real quick. Watch, watch. He's putting Vaseline in this dude's hands to put so it on this guy's putting his Vaseline neck. Here. So Diego Sanchez cannot clearly clinch because it'll be too best, you know, greasy and slippery. That's at 30. Cheater. Look at that. Look. Well, he's not really put on very thick. No, so I, I fast forwarded the video, but yeah. he did. The guy had hands up some Vaseline. Yeah. He put on his hands like this, and then he rubbed it on his neck and his back. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's not why he lost. Is that cheating though? That's cheating, right? Especially yeah, I guess. Him. Yeah, sure. Diego's an MMA fighter. He, I'm sure, yeah. is mean a lot. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you watch the fight? Least of his problems. I didn't watch the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Least of his problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He put Vaseline on. Yeah, that's not cool. Still, you know. I'm glad that you're giving this take because I thought for sure you'd be like, no, that's the illegal. No, no, don't don't do that shit. Yeah, definitely don't do it, but also least of his problems. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see the fight, so yeah. Yeah, that last thing didn't <laughs> help when he got punched in the face, you know? <laughs> he lasted four rounds, though. But this how much, yeah, of course he is. He's as tough, he's tough as yeah, they come. No, none true. tougher, dude. He shouldn't be in there. Mm -hmm. And then the one, I can't show you this video, but I'll, I can't, we can't put it on air, but I'll show you this video. This was insane. Oh, I tweeted this out. Oh, really? You did? He knocks him down, and I was like, oh, homeboy, I was like, I don't get, because I just thought the knockdown was the video, and then the, oh, dude, the dude gets, so for those of you just uh, listening to the podcast, so he gets clipped, gets sat down, it's a bare knuckle. Yeah. And I like, go, oh, this is definitely over. He gets up, and the other dude's coming for the kill, and then just whack Instantly. Out, out cold. And done. Yeah. That was such, a, that was such an exciting Insane. Moment. Insane. And that was Lorenz Hunt, the champion. Yeah, that's for the that champion. Yeah, he looked, oof, oof. That was a great comeback. All right, so we're not going to show this, but this is also something that happened at BKFC. This girl, Carissa, she twisted her ankle very badly. And I'll show you real quick here. Do you oh. see that? It's insane. So this is on oh. B, This is on Bare Knuckle FC's Instagram page. You can see all this stuff. And, and then twisted. she tries no, to get her, her, her thing was like completely. Yeah. It, it turned like, what, 
90 degrees and then she tries to flip it back here as you can see she thinks it's you can see it pop back into she's like oh i'm good <laughs> And then she tries to get back up. Don't put all the weight on that foot, though. No, I thought the same thing. I thought she was going to do that, but she doesn't. But then watch this right here. So she's getting up. And she's then, like, boom. You see it? Oh, my <laughs> God. It's so bad. It's, it's broke. It's so bad, yeah. Oh, my God. That must have That hurt. was horrific, yeah. Anyway. That was uh, Car Carissa Sagan. The ref is like, you got this. <laughs> hey, man. Um, all right, so we've kind of touched on this already is on Mak Makashev and the IV conspiracy. Did you know that fighters can get IVs? Um, so I had to read about that to figure it out. Me like, too. Only a certain level. In the rule book, it's like under three ounces. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. However, uh, this is what Nowitzki said. He's going off of what the Australian commission said. The golden snitch. The golden <laughs> snitch. Um, he's, 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 he's basically saying like, yeah, I, I trust what the, the commission's saying. They, they have no evidence of it. So it's fine. However, if Makachev did receive an IV in Australia, the Australian Commission, you can't have anything. You can't. You have to like notify them or something. You can't do anything at all. So it's illegal, no matter what. But didn't they say he had the IV? So Ali Abdelaziz posted. Uh, let's see here, here, and then Ariel Hawani pointed this out. So Ali Abdelaziz. For all those idiots out there, any fighter under the UFC banner can take two to three liters of IV as long as it's done by a nurse or a professional next week. I'm going to expose everybody. Islam Makachev is the pound for pound king. So he deleted this. So he's agreeing that he got it. He's uh, implying that he he could do it. So he's that like, means. Hey, that just so you guys know, they can do it. And then scroll up to what Ariel put. Ariel and Ali, uh, Ali hate each other, by the way. Oh, okay. And then he put, uh, yes, he did it because someone I would think told him he was incriminating himself with this tweet. You can't take two to three liters by a professional or not. It's 100 milliliter per 12 hours, among other details. Massive difference. But then we also found out later that the Australian Commission doesn't allow it at all. So if he did it in Australia, he definitely cheated. Or he did something that was against now, the Now let me ask you something. Just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. You think the guy that started the slap fight league is going <laughs> to look into the investigate this? Or do you think it's just going to be like, ah, whatever? Yeah. Let me see what it says. First of all, the burden of proof is on the person making the accusations because nobody has provided anything yet that shows Makachev took an IV of any size. Ali, who I actually like. Ali put, brother, these people make stuff up. It's shocking me. Islam did not, uh, did not do, do any, any IV. IV. Even if you want to, we uh, would do it the legal way. So many fighters didn't even know that they actually can use an IV. Wednesday, I'm going to embarrass everybody. Stay tuned. This Wednesday? Apparently. Yeah, this upcoming Wednesday. Yeah. But I mean... The original tweet, I don't want to get too much into it because I don't know what the hell's going on, but I, it does seem like, yeah, he would he did the IV the correct way. Is yeah. Kind of what he's implying. And the is like, there is no correct way. <laughs> but I mean, there's uh, there's not enough evidence regardless, so there, it's, it's going to be, be hard like, to yeah. prove. I still, you know, I mean, the overall message, whether he did it or not, I really don't care, to be honest. Mm. Have, they, the, uh, IV should be legal no matter, no matter what, but they're not, so it's against the rules. Yeah. So you can't, that's a gray area. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, how you feel about the fight. Now, I, I, I do think Volkanovski won that fight. Judge didn't give it to him. They can run it back. Run it back. Do it in America. Run it back. Do it in America. Um, and you, maybe you won't have this, you know, this kind of foolery. I don't know. You know, these commissions are wild, dude. But um, as, as Islam, or I'm sorry, as Bilal Muhammad said, you know, when the hate doesn't work, they make shit up. So I don't know. Casey just texted me this. Because there's only a certain amount of people that actually know what happens. Islam and whoever was in the room and the nurse that administrated the IV and whoever was in that room. That's really it, man. Volk probably doesn't know. Dan Hooker doesn't know. The, well, Islam seems the only people that know. So unless that nurse comes out and she's like, yeah, I gave him this, B, B6, but a lot of the calcium, all that shit, I doubt she will. I mean, she's a traitor, especially she's Australian, <laughs> right? Trader, ship or, her, ship her over to Dagestan, yeah. right? Let's find out who that is and ship her out of that goddamn country. Am I right, Australians? Oi, oi, oi! Brett ok Okamoto put: There seems to be misunderstanding across the sport on the prohibited or and non-prohibited use of IVs. I myself was not completely aware of this until the latest high-profile example accusation from UFC 28. Me neither. I sought further clarification. Here's the bottom line: If an athlete is a mystery. Uh, administrated an IV of more than the permitted 100 milli milliliters as long as it's done by a licensed pro it's not a violation 
even in cases where dehydration is caused by a weight cut is the issue being treated. If you need an IV that bad and, and that bad and that little is going to like bring you back to life, move up a weight class. In other words, IVs used to treat severe dehydration caused by cutting weight are not really banned as long as a physician is in, is the one to justify and perform it. But none of this matters because in the Australian yeah, Commission, so I think this is they a, say before. none. Now that's for yeah. that's for America and I don't know where else. But in Australia, yeah, yeah. for Brett Akimoto, none of that matters. Yeah, from what I read, none of that matters. It's just you're not allowed to do it. I, I, I think unless you contact USADA first and then and then there's an agreement or something like that. Yeah. Either way, it sounds like permitted. those TRT days. <laughs> we're just going to be big enough and famous enough to get that TRT. By the way, check this out, dude. So I sign into this account. We created this account in 2017. Never really used it, right? But the first tweet I saw on there, February. Holy it's shit. It's in February, too. February first. February 1st, 2017, the first big brown breakdown live, March 2nd, Ice House. How Ice crazy House is Saturday. that? Jesus Christ. Literally on, in a February. That was uh, super six dope years ago? Six years, yeah. Pretty Jesus freaking Christ. crazy. That's cool, man. All right. Uh, Conor McGregor, <laughs> he posted this on his Instagram. Good. This is funny. This him after he, he got, right when he got to tough. So he just got to tough. Yeah. It says, uh, good practice, team. Okay, it's time for the easiest part of any coaching job, uh, the cuts. Now, <laughs> I wasn't able to cut everyone I wanted to. I've cut a lot of you. Uh, Wendell is cut. Rudy is cut. <laughs> Janet, you're gone. Steven, I like your hustle. That's why it was so hard to cut you. Congratulations. The rest of you made the team, except you, you, and you. The ultimate fighter Las Vegas 2023. <laughs> right? It sounds so harsh, dude. Yeah, yo, fuck. Can you imagine if you go back up? Can yeah. you imagine if you're Janie, Wendell, I know, and Rudy, and you like, look up to Connor, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but he came out and said he cut a bunch of guys on team for his guys. Yeah, that's the and rumor. Connor came out and was like, that ain't true. I mean, but again, what I tell you, when the, when the hate doesn't work, they make up lies. So it's all this shit, man. Uh, so this is from Daniel Rubenstein. So he said, Ken Cross, Mitch Ramirez, Brandon Jenkins all got, all got pulled off to make room for three of Connor's guys to be on the show. Man, that's the so, better for being Connor's guy. So, okay. So Connor did say that that was not the case. Like he only knew one of the, one of the guys. And then Gilbert Burns, we all love Gilbert Burns. He said, hold on here. Oh, his guy got taken off. Yeah. Right? He said for sure. There you go. This guy's my teammate. Guys, name's tough. I know. Two-time PFL finalist at 55, worked so hard and was ready to finally get a shot in the UFC on tough, was in Vegas, feeling good to go. This freaking Connor brings his own guys and they kick him out. Not fair, but he put not fear. F-E-A-R. <laughs> I know. So it makes you know, the tweet a little English in his first language. Yeah, All yeah. good. But yeah, I mean. I mean, I, I think there might be some truth to it, but who knows? The only bummer is like clearly Connor. What's alarming to me is Connor's clearly not paying attention because if he just gets there, he's like, "Who? Who are these guys?" And like, that's your team. He's like, "Uh, him, him out there." Like, dude, we made the teams weeks ago. Where were you then? He's like, "I don't give a fuck. Get my guys in here." Yeah. Like, that's that's just not paying attention to details. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you said before, Connor, get him out of here. He's a powerful guy. He could do what he wants. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. The most Doesn't powerful matter. guy in the scene, not named Dana White. Mm hmm. Uh, we posted this, or we talked about this before, how uh, John Bones Jones is saying like he's cool with uh, Daniel Cormier comm commentating on his fight and doing all that stuff. And then this came out after as well. Uh, in all serious DC, I'm cool with you, bro. I recognize the man you are. I wasn't lying when I said those things in my post-fight interview. Outside of us being fierce competitors, I dig the way you represent yourself, the wrestling community, our community, and our sport. Sit down, interview, post-fight interview, coaches meeting. We're cool for real. I appreciate your competitive nature. You drove me to be a better competitor. Forever grateful. That's great. Very sweet, right? And then someone asked him about doing DC's YouTube channel. Hello, let's not go too far now. Yeah. Which is weird because that's an interview. True. But then, uh, so Daniel Cormier finally responded about all this stuff. And then I can break it down for you unless you want to just read it. It says, you, get, you guys know how I feel about John, uh, about John Jones and how we have felt about each other in the past. Um, but it leads me to this question. How do I take this? This is this particular tweet, which at times feels like a compliment, but also could be uh, interpreted as a bit of a dig, considering at times people call me biased in my commentary and all that other stuff first. Just for the record, I don't really need permission to call someone's fight. I didn't think take it as a dig. 
that's, yeah, later that's on he Daniel's said insecurities being like, it's a dig. People say I'm biased. And he, he, I'll be honest with you, it's kind of nice hearing Fighter uh, acknowledge that even with our history, he believes that I can do him justice and do the job fairly because I've done it before. It seems now that John is maturing. He seems to be taking a much different approach to the build, to, to approach to the build to the fight and how he's approaching everything. But it feels nice for him to acknowledge. I think this guy could do me justice. Yes, it's nice to hear him go, hey, man, I believe uh, DC can do the job, but I'm professional. I have to be able to do the job. I don't know that John Jones and I sit for an interview. I don't know if we sit for a fighter meeting. I don't know. I can't answer those questions for you just yet because I don't know. He they, he should. That would be amazing. They both if he moved does. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and no one knows John better than DC. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's who we need to do it. All right. And did and did you hear um, uh, Cyril gone? He, he did an interview in French, but they, oh, they didn't down. train much. Where he's, where he's like, yeah, the thing about me is, you know, I really don't train until I get the fight. That's all. Excuse me? Yeah. And I thought for sure you get like hate on him. People are like, man, that's how big of a freak he is. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't wrestle or grapple though. Like, yeah, I thought he was just working on his grappling and wrestling outside of fighting, like not during camp. Mm -hmm. Nope. Only gets ready. He, I can't have size enough. I was like, oh, I'll bet my house on John Jones now. You don't grapple and wrestle outside of camp? Hey, hey, monsieur, you're fucked. Straight up, dude. It's going to be a tough go for him in the office. You got out grappled by Francis, and he had one leg, daddy. Hmm. He did say because the John Jones fight was so exciting that he started to really train hard for it. But Okay. Know. So you've been yeah. wrestling for an extra month? Yeah, who knows? I, I hate hearing that. Yeah, I mean, but there you go. People are like, John guy. Jones does that. I'm like, he's not John Jones. All right. This is a bit of a controversial one. I know you're... You were homies with uh, Nate Marquardt back in the day. Uh, he, I guess he posted a tweet uh, that comes off as homophobic. Um, and, uh, let, so me I guess, let me read his tweet. He goes, yeah, yeah so here you go. Uh, so he's watching the UFC fights. He goes, wow, disgusting commercial watching ESPN Plus with my kids and I have to tell them to look away so they don't see two men kissing. Mm. Hashtag parf. Hashtag disgusting. Yeah, pretty homophobic. Yeah. Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, let's say it's not hateful to say that homosexuality, pedophilia, and uh, fornication. He put those together, which is kind of crazy. But. Oh, wow. But homosexuality ped and pedophilia is the same thing. Yeah. It's not loving to be silent when the culture praises things that lead people to hell. Interesting. Then quotes the Bible. It's not hateful, but loving to protect children from this world's evil, demented propaganda. Okay, Nate Dog. Are you from 1923? <laughs> hey, MMA Dragon, thanks for promoting my tweet. One, it wasn't hateful. Yeah, it was. Two, it wasn't unnecessary. A little bit. Three, add hominem attacks. attacks on me. Don't prove your point. I'm standing up against evil in the media where most people are too scared to get canceled. Um, and someone says, how are you grouping all those together in your Which mind? I agree. They're disgusting, sin-worthy of death. Yeah. That's why people need Jesus. Death on the cross to save them. He went hardcore double downing on that oh. stuff. Um, yeah, so... Amen. Homosexuality is an attack on society from Satan. Jesus Christ, Nate. It's the result of people turning away from God. It's so destructive to society. Mm. I love all people. I love them enough to tell them when their lifestyle will lead them to hell. I love them enough to offend them and be called a hateful bigot. Jesus said to love your enemies. It's bot loving to let someone drive off a cliff. It's not, oh, it's not, oh, it's not loving. loving. There you go. I was talking about like bots on the internet. <laughs> it's not loving to let someone dr drive off a cliff. I'm shouting at them to stop. He's going it, like just hardcore. He's so Bible. religious. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm, I don't want to deal with this. I mean, I obviously I have a relationship with Nate. I haven't talked to him in a while. He mm. was like our team captain. It, it's, it's just so closed minded to you can be religious, but you also have to be realistic. You know, that book was written how many thousands of years ago? So there's nothing wrong with it. And it's, it's religion is great for people. And some of the best people I know are religious, but when they do it like by, by the book, because back then you're talking about different times, man. So to not be open minded against gays or, uh, you know, transgender stuff like that is insane in 2023 it's so old school i know your bible's telling you one thing but i think nate doesn't have the perspective or the intelligence to realize some people are born that way man you think they choose that life 
you think these people are transgender that get hate and are scared to walk down the street and some get killed left and right and uh, forget about america forget about america try being gay in brazil russia dagestan china north korea south korea japan it's a tough go dude no one chooses that life it is a hard go man and thank god america allows those people to you know walk the streets freely but even then it's a tough go for them they don't a lot of them don't choose that now some might choose it some might who but, gives a shit but what did it bother you and nate how prove to me they're going to hell dude or do you think you being so judgmental and hurting these people's feelings and putting that hateful speech out there is gonna you think that gets you to heaven i got news for you buddy and i love nate mm -hmm. don't don't love this in any facet i don't associate with people like this it's not cool it's also 2023 then you're out of your mind if you don't think i have friends who are gay you think it's okay to hate on those people and think say they're going to hell that's insane it's 2023 dude saying they deserve death was the harshest thing i saw was like well looping just... together homosexuality and pedophilia is but that's that's, that's, that's where it crossed the line for yeah. me that was like yeah. oh my god this guy <laughs> you have to bleep out that <laughs> all right now i now i would be tempted to say too let's take it a little bit easy on nate i'm not co-signing this in any facet or saying it's okay that is not okay mm -hmm. at all ever i would be not going out on a limb to say ct has some sort of effect on why he's doubling down on jesus he now i've known nate for a very very long time he wasn't always like this a lot of this came after knockouts mm. now i'm not saying he got knocked so hard got punched so hard he found jesus but there there you have to give him some leeway right you have to be some leeway you don't want to throw hate his way because you hate when he threw hate your way that's not the way to two wrongs don't make a right there you have to chalk i would assume some is up to ct just being f frank with all you guys mm -hmm. but that's insane yeah that was tough to see it's it's but, a bummer uh, yeah. yeah um yeah i don't want to go too much into it but yeah all right. so alexander volkanovsky he had this video i think it was on his youtube channel about him and makachev after the fight they both agreed that they would do a rematch like oh, makachev yeah. said yeah re rematch in abu dhabi so that was the thing they were talking about together wow, why are you gonna do it in these fucking places <laughs> do it in america yeah that'd be cool too man in vegas hell yeah yeah do everyone it, goes to vegas prop, everyone from every place goes to vegas. no shenanigans <laughs> Uh, this is just, you know, uh, we talked about this on, I think, last week's episode, how Deontay Wilder wanted, for some reason, to fight Francis Ngannou in boxing. And, and then MMA. boxing gets my dick hard. <laughs> MMA? No, no, no. And yeah. we're, who's going to, I guess, maybe PFL would do it? Or they could just do their own promotion and do it? But uh, friend said, welcome to the free world, Bronze Bomber. Hope you are a man of your word. See you soon. Deontay Wilder was declared that he's now an open agent and taking full control of his career. He said, no bad blood. I'm still part of PBC. I'm just an open agent, open fighter. I want to fight on all type of platforms. I want to work with anyone. France said, I'll be your huckleberry. Yeah, man. especially for those rule sets like MMA and boxing. He's like, yeah, I'm in. So he's hoping that Deontay Wilder's really serious about it. But which, even if you know, but even if he called Deontay, he's like, man, that's just for the tweet. I'm not fighting fucking MMA. I'll box you. He should, it's still his boxed. best chance to beat somebody at that level. Mm -hmm. Deontay Wilder's your best chance. He's been doing the least amount of time. He just has a huge right hand. He doesn't have a ton of fundamentals, and I love Deontay. That'd be a great fight. He's such a great guy, yeah. Such I, a good I, I will never forget yeah. how awesome he is, yeah. Uh, this is interesting. Bo Nickel teamed up with Jake Paul. I guess he signed to his better, um, that that new app that he's doing, yeah. or whatever, so he's he's part Him of that. Him and our boy, the Schmo. Oh, the Schmo, too? The Schmo's part of it, Dope. too. It's Bo Nickel's and the Schmo. Yeah, so uh, Bo Nickel's going to apparently help Jake with wrestling, and he's he's hoping that Jake, Jake helps him with striking. Yeah. It could Boxing. be good for each other. Yeah. But that's cool. Bonoke is like blowing up now. Yeah, he's crushing it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we talked about this, <coughs> but uh, this fight gets my dick hard too. Yeah, I, I don't know. If, did we mention this? I, I just forgot. So just in case we didn't, for Kiasa UFC versus Li Jingling, Li Jingling also known yeah. as the Leech. The that's Leech, that's a great yeah. fight. UFC 287. And uh, let's move on towards. Uh, There's another thing I want to play for you. I don't know how, if we can actually put it online, but everything's on Instagram. Let's see it. So. Conor McGregor put this on his Instagram on February 6th. He's going to say some, you know, exciting news. And he was, you know, imitating Steve Jobs. And I thought it was going to be some sort of connection with Apple. But it was or, just about proper 12. Oh, tight move. 
Uh, yes, exactly. So I thought it was gonna oh, be actual hilarious. apple. Apple. That's brilliant. Yeah, it is. It was. Uh, <laughs> and he has the green Roly. Mm -hmm. Is do you know much about that green Roly? <laughs> yeah, Ro Rolex is ridiculous. Um, yeah, tight move. <laughs> it's more of that. It's so funny. Yes, that's what, what he said. <laughs> so Paul Costa, I don't know, dude. Paul Costa is like legit funny now. What so did he do? He did a, a spoof on his spoof. Right? <laughs> so then Paul Costa did the same thing. He teased it like that there's something you know announcement going to be made, and Let then this is it. his video. <laughs> his jeans are so tight. That's well, funny. He went through all that trouble to make this it's video, great. and uh, yeah, it's, it's just brilliant. yeah, he's becoming funnier and funnier, funnier and funnier. Uh, let's just do one more. Let's do. Oh, so Bryce Mitchell posted this on his Instagram. I guess he had a splinter in his Damn. hand. Damn. Right? Trying and to cut out myself and I was passed out. It was buried in my hand. Doc just got it. I always wear gloves from now on. And the fight's still and it's on. And three inches, yeah. Three inches Holy long. Holy shit. Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Well, at least the fight's still on. Thank God. Yeah. Is that it? He says he's not a pussy. Yeah, that's it. All right, kids. Cowbats fight campaign this freaking Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, you have Tommy Fury versus Jake Paul with oh, a sure. very special crew, which I will announce on my social media. That is going down this mother trucking Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific, Thick Boy YouTube. Come watch it with the boys. Should be a fun one. You had some UFC. You had a fight night, Krylov versus Ryan Spann. Uh, but really, the main event should be Tatiana Suarez versus uh, Montana. Uh, Suarez is your next champion at flyweight. I would bet the bank on it. She should be your main event, but she's not. But watch your Molly Wap De La Rosa. And uh, you got BKFC. You got one championship. So you got, it, if you're a fight fan, hardcore especially, you got a lot of stuff to watch. Um, yeah, touring wise, I'm all over LA or California. It, Tuesday night starts at the comedy store in the main room. Um, Thursday night, I'm in Bakersfield, one show only. That thing's almost sold out. And then uh, Pasadena Ice House, the grand opening of the Ice House, Saturday, Shop and Friends, Trevor Wallace, Adam Ray, and very special guests. That goes down at 10 p.m. Saturday night at the Ice House in Pasadena, California. Brea, one show only, Friday, March 3rd, two shows, one magical night. And then March 4th, you have the special uh, Cowboys Fight Companion with Jelly Roll, uh who else i got i got jelly roll why am i forgetting somebody else? oh that's right jelly roll rampage and a very special guest um that goes down march 4th on thick boy youtube for ufc 185 with john jones and then oklahoma city march 9th through 11th tacoma washington one of my phase march 23rd through 25th get your tickets for all the shows at thickboy.com but um comedy store Ice House and Bakersfield, you're up next. Then Brea. Love you guys. Tickets at thickboy.com. Be nice to each other. Stay safe. I'm out.